Hello, today I'm looking at a Bassius 120 watt USB C and A power adapter. So this is unique in that it actually can go up to 120 watts. It isn't a new power delivery standard or anything, but it can do 120 watts total. That means we can get 100 watts out of this port and still pull an extra 20 watts out of one of these other ports. If you're new to the channel, there's a whole series on these power adapters where I test them for the power in and out while also comparing them to other offerings. There are billions of power adapters in use, and this series will help you make an informed buying decision since not all devices are created equal. So when we take a look at the back of the box, we can see it has a whole bunch of different options here for output power and voltage. You can see it's got the safety listing on the outside of the box, the six for efficiency. Let's open it up. So to try and be more of a premium brand, you can see they give you a little carrying pouch here to give you the charging cable. We've already tested this cable in the USB-C cable video. It didn't do too bad, even though it seems like it's kind of thin. It's just a charging only cable though. The packaging weighs 152 grams, definitely heavy. The power adapter weighs 219 grams, not light. All right, so here it is. It's got the 120 watts. They really understated with their logo. It's just got this little thing right here. It says the Bassius brand on it. And let's take a look at some of the specs. So they do right on the device here, give you a whole bunch of stuff. And that's because it can do a lot of things. We got the safety listing. So you see that fish, official model number, CCGAN120S. The box on this one had one interesting claim. You can see it uses both gallium nitride and silicon carbide technology. And these are both wide band gap semiconductors. And I'm gonna have to do a teardown of this thing to get some more information on how this thing actually works. So just some comparisons for size. Here we have the 120 watt adapter. Here's the Anker Nano 2 65 watt adapter. And here's the Hyphen X 100 watt adapter. You can see that it's mm, comparable in size to the 100 watt Hyphen X power adapter, but they are different. The Nano 2 is quite a bit smaller than both of these power adapters, but it's also only 65 watts. So here's the user manual. We have these three different ports. And what we're really looking to see here is if it has all the various different modes. So for the USB-C port, we're looking to see that five amps and 20 volts. So that means it can deliver 100 watts. The USB-A port does have some other modes. We can see the two C ports will give you 60 plus 60 watts. So that's a little bit confusing. This, this isn't the greatest thing I've seen in terms of telling you what it can and can't charge or how much your limitation of your charge is gonna be when you use the diff various different ports. So this little power adapter has some strange properties. If we set this to an auto mode, we find that the power analyzer will sit here and hunt. It'll try and find what mode it needs to be in. It's not a good candidate for that. And you see all our numbers are just dashes. So we take it out of auto mode. Every once in a while, this little light comes on down here. That's letting us know that we have an overload condition. So this power adapter is doing something kind of funny. So we have to go up to a higher current until we don't see this peak over button lighting up. So this power analyzer does something a little funny over here. You can see these peak amps. Every once in a while are jumping up to one, 1 1.5 amps, somewhere in that range. And that's because this thing there is 2.4 amps. This thing is using power in very, very short little bursts. So it turns on and then it turns off. And it turns on, grabs a little bit of power and then turns off for a while. So that's a little bit of a trick they're playing with this power adapter. And it's, uh, it's, it's pretty hard for this older Yokogawa analyzer to catch conditions like this. So I had to actually bring in another power analyzer over here that has a longer averaging time. So this only has an averaging time of two seconds. So we're gonna go ahead and change it over. We're gonna put it on the other power analyzer so that way we can see the performance of this thing. So this power analyzer up here is gonna freak out for a while while it tries to figure out what's going on. I'm going to manually range it up to one amp. So this analyzer has a 20 second average option. So we're gonna go with that. And now we gotta wait 20 seconds before we get our data. Okay. So the big number we're looking at here is this idle, this power consumption right here. So here we're seeing about 255 milliwatts. So basically it's compliant with the test method, even though it is drawing very, very large peak currents and then dropping down to very low values. Uh, in the, between the time when it's not drawing power. It's kind of tricky. Yeah, not necessarily the best, but it is what it is. So another thing of note here on this power analyzer is we can hold the data for one, but two, we can actually see these peak values that we get when this thing decides it wants to draw a lot of power. And you can see we're using 2.36 amps just in that short, short duration burst. So that's pretty, pretty high there. Not so great. 
and change this to power peak for that very, very short duration. 356 watts peak this thing is trying to draw off the wall so yeah it's not so nice this thing's just like slamming your power grid like that for a very short period of time but yeah it is uh, but this power analyzer can give you some really really interesting details like that whereas this uh this old guy down here doesn't have the ability to do that but this thing's stable as a rock all right so i went ahead and grabbed the data for the idle conditions we're using 0.1 watts at 5 volts over here and you can see our powers come up to about 413 milliwatts. This is that ultra light load condition. So basically, sometimes you plug a cable into this thing or something like that, it'll sit around this point, even though it's doing nothing. All right, let's go through the test modes for this one. So we can see we have our red light. We have five volts up here. So let's push the button. Nine volts, 12 volts, 15 volts, 20 volts, and a 20 volt PPS mode. So we got the basic modes covered. So it should be able to charge mostly everything. Where we've seen is some Samsung devices like the lower voltage PPS modes, and this doesn't have those, so you may struggle with a, a little bit with some of your Samsung devices. They're still gonna charge with PD, but they might not be able to charge at the 45 watts that you can get out of a Samsung charger. And honestly, they don't charge that at that rate for the whole time anyway. It's just a very short short duration of the time that they're charging for that higher power, and then it's gonna taper off, and this is the way lithium ion batteries charge. Okay, so we got it up and running here. We're at our 12 volts. We checked all the voltage modes, but now we're gonna start looking at some of the power parameters and we start to see something immediately about this power adapter that's unique. And there's only one other power adapter that's shared this kind of feature set, which is it has power factor correction on all the modes. So we can see right here, our power factor is already 0.76. It's only operating at 12 watts with the five volt mode. So this thing is always gonna be power factor corrected. But uh, overall, this thing's doing the job. It's got the power factor correction, got the safety listing. I'm liking what I see so far. How many watts do you think we can pull out of this 100 watt port? We're going to find out. So just a quick note on this power adapter. I'm going to bring the mic in nice and close. I don't know if that was audible or not, but this thing does emit a little bit of sound. So there is some acoustic output from this device uh, when you put it under a little bit of a load. So right now we got it operating around 50 watts. All right, let's go ahead and take it up to overload, see what we can do. We got 101 watts, 102 watts, 103 watts, and it's out. So this thing only does 102 watts before it trips out on that overcurrent. Uh, we can see over here, though, after it tripped, it did recover back to the five volts. It does not require a disconnect and reconnect to recover, so that's awesome. We have our 30 watt load dialed in on our uh, Generation B tester here. Yeah, it seems to be doing the 30 watts through here. So this has quick charge. This power adapter with the USB-A port will do five, nine, 15, and 20 volts through that quick charge 2.0 interface specifically. So it's a little bit on the older side, but it can do the higher voltages for an older quick charge type device. You can see now that we're drawing 10 watts on our USB-C port at the same time. Let's go ahead and take this up to 50 watts. So technically this is rated to do 60 watts on this port while that USB-A port is operating. So you can see we're, we're pulling that no problem. Let's see if we can go a little higher. Let's see if we can do 70. 71, 80, so right now 80. All right, so right there we're 90 on here and we're 30 watts on our USB-A port. So we're actually achieving the 120 watt rated output of this power adapter. You can see we're using about 132 watts off of the, the wall right now to achieve that output. It's meeting its 120 watts, no problem. That's great. Let's take it up to overload under this condition and see what happens. 95, and it's off. So this turned off, but my USB-A port stayed on. So the ports do operate independently of each other, which is nice. And we're able to pull the, the you know rated power of this power adapter, 120 watts, off of multiple ports at the same time. I did go through and check the two USB-C ports, and I was able to pull the rated power off of both USB-C ports, so 60 watts on each port, without any issues. All right, let's go to some of the overall data for the Bassius power adapter. Overall, we can see it hits some really high numbers. That power factor went high almost immediately, and the THD stayed low throughout all the testing, which is excellent. The efficiency was very good across the whole range. Not class leading, but not bad. The consequence of that is we see that the peak US numbers stay pretty high across the board. So when we take a look at this compared with other devices, we can see that the idle power consumption is on the higher side, 
It's not the worst though. And we can see that that power quality number is not bad, 48. When we look in terms of the overall number, so as of March, 2022, this Bassius 120 watt power adapter is officially the best power adapter I've tested. Getting a score of 169 overall, taking the lead. When we take a look at this on the graph, we can see that that idle condition, again, the watts are a little on the high side, but overall the quality is fairly high, so it's a trade-off. It does meet its requirements though. When we look at the general ratings for this thing, it's the best one in terms of its power quality. The way it uses the power from the grid is very, very clean. So overall, this Bassius power adapter is a little on the expensive side. We see about $68 for this one. It has a safety listing, the power quality score one. Somebody's gonna have to top this one. So yeah, if you can find yourself one of these power adapters, not a bad buy. I personally got mine off of eBay. Check back in the future to see if we have a power adapter that can defeat the new champion, the Bassius 120 watt power adapter. Thanks again, and bye. Something is coming. Here it is. The database is in operation.